off from when recordings air. Uh, alamak. Somebody got removed. I think it was Patricia. I don't know why. So anyone who can contact her, ask her to try back. Uh, Patricia dah masuk balik eh? Patricia, you back in? Okay. Try to ask. I don't I don't know whether Patricia is in. Let me check. Patricia, Patricia. Ada sini ka? Because uh, when this, when Google Meet said, okay, somebody's back in, I assume it's her. Yeah. Patricia, you ready back in? Hmm, let me check what's up there. Dah ada tu doktor, Batisha tu. Ada eh? Dah ada tapi tak tahu dia takut dia ada tapi dia terkeluar sendiri macam ni. Okay, Batisha Karim. Hello, hello Batisha, are you there? She's not there. Okay, tapi tak apalah, we can continue with the lecture. Okay. Uh, doktor nak tanya. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ha. Ada yang project tu, hmm. apa maksud um, letak title page for each action. Okay, okay. Actually, that question came up. Let me check. One of your friends asked a very detailed question. Uh, which, uh, that's one of the questions lah. Let me just check that. Huh? Title page tu ramai kat orang tanya tu. I think yes. Okay. Okay, so, so some questions that I've uh, compiled. Uh, you have four four tasks basically, right? In uh, part two, so should it be continuous action or should we present them separately? Uh, and the title page question comes up. Okay, uh, does our ball have to interact with your background? Okay, these things. Okay, let, let's tackle the title page. You know, so what what I mean by that? Okay, you're asked to do the different actions, right? Uh, one, two, three, four actions. Four. I also forget. Okay, but anyway. Uh, what I want you to do is sort of like give uh, the title of what action you are going to do. For example, you're going to do the jump up and down action. So one screen should come uh, and show jump up and down or whatever you want to write. Okay, but as long as I'm able to separate between the four actions and it's separated by its respective title page. Okay, so title and then after that the animation. And then you stop for a while. Uh, Another page comes up, title page comes up, left to right. Okay, character moving from left to right, for example. Title page stays there maybe for two, three seconds, and then the action, and so on and so forth until the final action. Okay, understood? So that, that's basically what I mean. And the format or whatever, whatever format you want to choose, lah, based on your creativity. Okay. Uh, be a continuous action or should we present them separate or oh, it doesn't okay for the question should it be a continuous action i think what you mean is that should the actions in uh, for like all the four actions should they be related and tell a story is that what you mean the one asking this is uh Selwyn. am i saying your name right by the way uh yeah okay so what, what do you mean by that um, you mean it should fo form a story? Is that what you mean? No. Uh, what I what I meant was like, uh, should it be like four, like the four parts of the action for the four action? Should it be like one whole? They should be one whole story, or should it like separate? Like, um, yeah. Okay. I, that's actually what I meant as well. Yeah. It 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 does not need to form a story. I just want to see the main thing. I want to see for those actions is that I want to see how you animate them. Okay, how you animate them. So they don't have to be related in any way. Uh, for example, action one does not need to be related to action two. It does not need to have a continuation of a storyline or anything. I just want to see how you animate the character. But the character must be standard. Okay, you, must, you must choose, for example, if you're animating a ball and you choose a red ball, 
Okay, so throughout all those four actions, it's going to be that red ball. It shouldn't change to a blue ball or something like that, or something different. Okay, uh, let's say your, your character has an eye at the beginning and suddenly it doesn't have an eye anymore. Okay, I don't want that. It needs to be uh, consistent. Okay, so yeah, it does not need to form a story. Uh, so yeah, and of course, it's presented separately because of the title pages. Okay, so the first action, one title, and then you do the action. Okay, after action is finished, you come up with the second title page with its action and so on and so forth. And this right. background again. Yeah, background, if you if you look at the instructions, what background is Roma? What 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 what's the background for the actions in your part? What background should you use? White background. Yeah, there's a white background. Not even the background that you drew, okay? Just a white background. Let me check, Malik. So, yeah, we go back to the instructions. <clears throat> I'll share the screen. Now. Okay, we go back to the... Uh, please note that this is your first test replacement though. so you need to take it seriously okay this is the background that you need to do okay this one is separate this one is number one and two basically okay number three it says here produce the following shots okay animation shots on a blank white background okay so i want to see the characters like individually jumping and what's what we have ball squashing and stretching somehow animate this Okay, ball accelerating left to right. So, like I said here, you need to have anticipation because when a ball wants to move, for example, it wants to start running, it must sort of like, uh, what do you call it? Trying to gain, like uh, trying to build up the energy, right? So it's sort of like, like when you want to run, you do like that first and then you choom, then you go, right? So a ball must somehow show that as well, okay? And of course, when it starts to go from left to right, please have a look at the examples. Have a look at the uh, video files that I gave you. You'll have an idea of how to do this. All right. Uh, this is the best that we can do, actually, because uh, normally in the lab, if we're face to face, that's the only way we can show that to you. Like if you go left to right, how you animate it on uh, using the Wacom and, 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 and whatnot. Right? But now because we don't have that, we don't have a face to face uh, luxury. So the only thing uh, you can do is have a look at the examples and then try to follow the examples. Because in all of those videos, there are examples examples of these movements, especially the accelerating from left to right. I don't mean like from one screen, one part of the screen to the next, but if that's what you want to do, no problem. Uh, the main thing I want to see is anticipation being applied, okay? Anticipation, try to understand that. That's one of the concepts, one of the principles of animation, meaning getting ready for an action. When you want to show that to the audience, it must be clear uh, what the character wants to do, okay? For example, when the ball wants to bounce, okay, when it's trying to, what do you call it, uh, compile the energy, what to co collect the energy and then for it to bounce, it's sort of like squashing itself really, really, really low for a certain period of time, like a few seconds and then choom, goes up. So that's the ant anticipation part. And then of course, followed by any relevant uh, principle and mostly it's gonna just gonna be stretch and squash, okay? So ball looking left and right, so this might be a bit tricky. It, it might seem simple, but to make the ball look left and right, it's a bit challenging, if, if especially when you're animating or drawing with a mouse. So that's why I have a look at the examples, okay, that I gave you. Everybody can open the MOV files by now, right? The simplest way, of course, is to use QuickTime. So nobody's facing any problems with that anymore, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, ball jumping up and down, and then out of the stage. So somehow, I don't know how many times up and down depends. All right, it totally, it's up to you, up to you. But and then at one point, it jumps out. But of course, when it wants to jump out, it doesn't just tie, 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 boom, like that. Doesn't make any sense, right? So like tie, 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 and then suddenly changing or something, boom, and it goes out. Maybe anticipating the movement or whatever. Okay, so that's what what we want to see. And I've also included the marks distribution. This is just as a guideline, the minimum requirement. 
if you believe you want to add some other things, uh, some some creativity stuff, please do. Okay, but extra marks won't be given for anything that's that, that that's not included in here, lah. Okay. Did I say that right? Yeah, I think so. So appropriate duration. So that one, take your time. Don't rush the animation. Okay, which also means that you need to start earlier. In do this in a continuous manner. Do it and then leave it and then come back and have a look again. Right, because. You have until the end of the week, right? I also forget when I ask you to be there. Eh? Right 27, eh? 27, right? So this was given way before 23rd. On here, I just put 23rd for political purposes, but actually I gave this to you quite early, right? So please do work on it, okay? Please do work on it. Yang trace, wait, ground to semana itu? Oh, yang tu. Trace itu tekap. Tak tak, maksud saya kan tadi untuk blank background yeah, yeah. Ini, so, so that, yang tu kira separate lah okay so as you can see dalam in, in our submission kan mana submission okay uh, you can draw two on top of one what i mean by that is that okay for one and two you need firstly you need to draw the background right so somehow you get if you don't if you can't design your own background maksudnya you tak boleh design from scratch right uh, you can Take something from the internet and you can trace on it. So how you do that? How to is it? Uh, is the question how to trace? Kamu jumpa? Ah, tak tak tak. Maksud saya macam uh -huh. ni kan sketch background kan satu lagi tu kan ah uh, untuk bl blank background. So yang ni yes. yang untuk ah uh, background sketch yang sketch ni sketch okay. untuk letak apa? Eh? Tak. Letak apa? Aduh. Tak tak. Arahan, tak, 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 tak. arahan dah jelas tu. <laughs> Kena, kena new layer ke macam? New layer ke okay, those are technical questions. But basically for one and two, what we want you to do, first you must, basically what I want you guys to do, first design a background. Choose a background. You can design or you can take from the internet and then you can trace over it, do whatever you want to do, okay? But this background, like I said, okay, the thing here, it must have an entry and exit point. If you're not sure what this means, go and have a look at the at the videos okay, that I give you. You'll see that the characters will have an entry and exit point. It will come in from somewhere and then it will exit somewhere, meaning exiting the scene okay, where it, it's not ex uh, in existence anymore. For example, in one of the uh, videos, it came through a window, it jumped out through another window. Okay, It came out of a basket and then it went into a drawer, for example. So those two... Uh, entry and exit points must be made clear. Don't label them entry, exit point. You don't need to do that. As a matter of fact, it's not encouraged. But uh, this one must be uh, visible. Lah, okay. So you can trace that. So I hope that one is clear. Okay. And then you need to do, draw the character animation plan. And how you do that? Like this. The examples are here. Okay. This is the example. You see? So imagine this is your background that you have draw. Let's say you draw this one. Lah. Okay, but of course, this is an example only it's from the internet. Okay, so your character, you will show how it moves. Okay, like tie, 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 jumping. For example, just like this. I don't know. I don't see the arrow for this one. Okay, this one's not that good. It doesn't have an arrow. Okay, this one, right? For example, in from here, tie, jumps down. Pom, 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 pom. This one, they look at you like in out. So you can do that. Actually, I pull back what I said just now. You can indicate in and out using text. So no problem. Okay, but it must be visible. So this plan you must do. So you have your background, you draw it, or you 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 draw it yourself, or you trace over it, and then you your ball movement you will draw on top of that background. Understood? The background that you design. This this uh, the the reason for this is I want to see your animation plan. Okay, because this animation plan will be the blueprint for your actual animation, which you will submit at the end of the semester. Okay? You will need to submit the actual animation at the end of the semester. Okay? So, the one and two, you submit as this one. Okay? As a JPEG. Because I just want to see this movement, your plan, make sure you have the arrows in and out. Okay? Just the plan, make it into an image, okay? Name it like this, okay? Assignment, uh, assessment weeks uh, one to seven, your metric, and then your plan.jpg, 
right? Preferably JPG, lah, so that everyone understands that you can do PNG, no problem, but don't use weird formats that requires a different uh, software to open. Okay, so that's for the background thingy that you design. And this one, number three, okay, the simple actions, this is a separate thing. This will be on a flash on your file, okay? Or compile all the short animations in one file. So that's basically for number three. So you put all these movements on a flash file that does not use the background that you already designed because that background is used for the JPEG. Huh? Get that. Hello, am I still connected? Who was asking just now, is that clear? Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, so number three is a separate thing. Like it's a flash file, all right? So do this on a flash file because I want to see how you animate all these things, okay? Ball squashing, blah, blah, blah. Do, uh, please do not underestimate this. All of this is not easy to do. So I've given you ample time. Try your best to come up with the best animation uh, for all these four, all right? And again, combine it in one file. One long timeline, it's going to be very long, most probably, okay? And, and from there, I want to see uh, how you put the title page, but the marks, if you just want some guide, it's sort of like this, okay? I put the marking punya. This is sort of like macam schema jawapan, but the actual answer will come in the form of your own artwork, okay? Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Kalau kan ada bagi contoh tu kan, yang tail tu tak payah kan? Just Tak payah, tak payah. Tail tak payah. Yeah, you don't need to do the tail. Uh, in in the examples, we have a tail, okay? But you don't have to do the tail. You do not have to do the tail. Oh, I didn't write it. Eh? You don't have to do the tail. Just the ball, okay? Just the ball. The tail I'm considering, but I don't think we'll do it. I don't think we'll do it, okay? And I think in your background, I asked you to include one object, right? Uh, let me see. Uh, download background availability of objects. Oh no, not necessary. Okay. Anyway, so please please have a look at the examples to get an idea of what type of movements in Jubilee what, right? Uh, and try to maybe have an interaction at least with one object. Okay. Uh, I think in one of the samples, I, I forget whether I gave it to you or not, is a ball, it's in black and white, it jumps and it uh, finds a pendulum, it swings on it and it goes inside. So in interaction with the pendulum and one of the examples, I think we have the one with the drawer or something. Yeah, they must look like chi, right? So something like that. And definitely we have, I think, Vivian's one. Uh, that one is very uh, memorable actually. So jumping, jumping in the end, it goes into the dustbin. The dustbin shakes a bit, okay? So do stuff like that, okay? Or you can, whatever type of interaction, but not too much. Because mainly, please remember, what I want to see uh, is actually, especially for, for this one, that, that actually that one, the one that I explained just now is for your final project. Now. So when you want to do it, uh, at least have it interact with something. And that should be uh, reflected in your plan. If you have something you want it to interact with, Included in your plan, but remember this is just a plan. It can change. Okay, we don't have to be too strict Okay, but just give me a plan. Okay, we need to see a plan of your animation. All right And don't give a blank ball, please color the ball and I recommend the ball just to have one solid color like this. Okay uh, the, the thing is if you have a ball that has texture or has shading and stuff It's not that I don't recommend you do it it's just that sometimes the emphasis then goes to coloring the ball properly. If you put, for example, some, some the lighting effects that hit the ball, when you animate, because we don't have a lighting effect like in 3D software, so I'm afraid you might spend too much time, you know, trying to really take care of that piece of the artwork and not the animation itself. Okay. So, what else? What else? What else? Okay, adakah menjawab soalan? Did I answer the question? Hello, did I answer the question just now? Who was asking? Saya pun tak ingat. But it's clear lah, right? Okay. 
Yeah. Okay, all of this. Okay. So no tail, you don't have to draw the tail. Those who want to draw the tail, we treat that as something separate. For the plan, you don't need to draw the tail. Okay, just the ball moving. For the final animation, that depends on what we're gonna do next. Okay, so I hope that's clear. Okay, so if no more questions about that, let's go to the PowerPoint slides. Okay, so today we're just gonna cover, it's supposed to be a short topic. If I'm able, I'll show you uh, some samples, okay? Some interesting samples. Okay. You're supposed to see the PowerPoint. Everyone sees it, right? Ah, no, butang. Oops. Doesn't want to go full screen, why? Right? Okay. You're presenting to everyone, return to the video call when ready to stop. Why is it giving me an error? Give me a second. You already know that PowerPoint today. Okay, I'm trying that again. Okay. <clears throat> okay, today we're gonna have a look at this stuff. Uh Okay, what happened? Okay, background shots, camera angles, storyboards, and animatic. So it's either for your general knowledge, or if we have to do a written exam, then this will be required knowledge. All right, okay, so to give understanding about the concepts of your animation, <coughs> which is necessary, I think you've seen this in the earlier parts of the animation, you need a background. Okay, and uh, this is one of the backgrounds used for Lion King. Uh, I believe you guys might know about the Lion King from Disney. Uh, recently, they came up with a like a fully animated feature that was realistic 3D, which, which was no fun actually for those who actually know the classic one. So anyway, when you have a background like this, okay, there's a source over there. You can go and have a look. It's quite important for you to also know how to play with staging. And that's another important thing. Staging, you all think that what staging is? Anybody remember what staging is? Come on. Staging, very important. Nobody remembers what staging is. Hello. Ingat kata ingat. Is there a yes or a yes. no? Yes. Ingat. Awak tak jawab. Okay. So the others, I assume you guys don't know what, what the hell I'm talking about. Right. Anyway, staging yeah. is... Staging is that so that your character is placed in a in a in a, in a, in a location so that the message being con conveyed is unmistaken unmistakably clear. Okay, so in case in this case we don't have a character, so tak lah, Okay, so this is the background. Sometimes you want to have some effects with the background. I think you guys have done this before. Okay, so you can zoom in like that. So you're supposed to see a zoom in. Okay. And normally when you zoom in, again, related to staging, you want to see something, right? For example, like this, okay? Something like this. But of course, I didn't get a good picture. Okay? So, yeah, this, this is basically, you know, how you can play and manipulate backgrounds. But backgrounds are basically important, okay? Because uh, you need to give a setting to your story, whether it's an animation or a video. It's not like uh, how, how, like some assignments, you know, you can see, some courses, they have assignments of point and shoot where you have your uh, one person holding the mobile phone and then just shooting the video without taking into consideration the type of background and stuff, okay? But in animation, it's important because you're designing the background yourself, which is going to be very important for your assignment, okay? It must be neat, well, and interesting and also relevant, okay? It must be relevant and it must not be overbearing, okay, where the background takes over, you know, the attention in the background is greater than the scene itself. So these things you must be able to balance. So when you download your background, please make sure that the backgrounds that you choose or even the ones that you draw 
maybe the color scheme won't like uh, take over from the actual scene itself. Okay. And one, one other thing to understand is that the background can also determine what we call the, the shots in a video. So shots in a video is also something very important. This is a hierarchy <clears throat> of shots. Actually, this was extracted from my PhD thesis, but it's, the, the concept is similar throughout whatever that you're doing, whether you're doing video, uh, what you call it motion picture, or whether you are doing animation. The concepts are basically the same. Okay, so you have something like this, which is the whole video, right? But when you start to break it down, then you will go level by level. This is one way to break it down. You have the scene, okay? For example, you have maybe a car chase scene, okay? Kejar mengejar naik kereta, right? So for car chase scenes, of course, you're going to have many, many cameras taking from the various angles, right? But it forms a semantic unit called a scene. Okay, car chase, all right? Or maybe you have a fight scene. <clears throat> fight scene, of course, people will be fighting. Okay, so that, that one, you, 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 you're able to identify it as a scene. And as you also know, scenes would be, uh, consist of what we call shots. So as you can see here, I'll try to zoom in a bit. So when you're dealing with shots, okay, this is an example of a shot. So as you can see, there's not much difference in this shot because it's taken by one continuous camera action. For example, you're doing a shot when you're, somebody is reporting. Maybe I'm interviewing you. So I'll have my, my microphone in your mouth and I ask you, sir, how, what do you think about the latest US uh, political elections? And then you'll answer. Okay, so I take a shot of your face. So that's one shot. And then when it goes back to my face as the reporter, blah, 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 blah that's one shot. So that's what I mean by one continuous camera action. So as you can see here, this is one type of shot, another type of shot. The camera has changed angles already. It's, it's becoming a far view. It goes back to a close-up view where you can see the person, okay? Things like that. All right. And shots, of course, the most, uh, what do you call it, uh, fundamental unit or primitive unit, if you like, are the frames. So you deal with frames in flash or in animate every day, right? The things that you draw, okay? Uh, the frames and you, you might realize when you're using your animate your software you only are dealing with one shot Okay, we're not going into camera shots yet in your project because that's a difficult thing as you will see after this It needs a bit of practice. Huh? Okay, so these are some of the definitions that, that, that I got from Another source. Okay, so these are some of the things that you will uh, yeah. Some of the definitions that we can get for each of the units Okay, shot a visual camera view, more on this later. Scene, a combination of shots. A sequence, a combination of continuous scenes, which we will not cover actually. A shoot is a production activity to get the picture and audio with desired quality. So all of this, you know, it's worth knowing about, but we won't cover it that much in your actual project. Okay. So this is an example of, of some shots, okay. Right, so this is for a, football match all right and this is for animation so as you can see similar concept this is a far view shot if you'd like or a long shot this is a close-up shot similar to animation you have also this is in a storyboard this is a there's a name for this one i think it's a long or far shot and this is a close-up right so you have the names being explained here different types of shots you know they have different uh, names, of course, but they are used to convey different types of meaning. So, going back to this, normally, okay, all of you have seen football matches, right? Even in PKP now, they are recording it in Stadium Astro. You can you can catch it on YouTube, right? Like yesterday's match, for example. Okay, very good for Liverpool fans. Okay, very nice. But anyway, you can see here normally for football matches, when do they show? Uh, far view shots or long shots like this. Can anyone answer? Normally during what do they show these kinds of shots? Imagine this is moving. Like this is moving. What do they show? What action are they showing? Sepakkan corner. Sepakkan corner. Sepakkan corner dia tunjuk long shot lah. Free kicks. Okay lah. Uh, I'd say corner kick and free kicks may be medium short but normally okay but I, I, I get what, what you're saying okay 
but for this one normally when it's normal gameplay right when nothing is happening when the game is boring okay passing 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 sampai ke sudah that's why when they keep passing 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 what happens normally the cameraman will try to vary things a bit right they put it into a medium shot close up shot to show somebody who's passing but normally you you'll show shots like this when there's nothing happening lah this is in video if you're talking about uh, actual uh what you call it uh footage from maybe sports or whatever but when you go to a close up shot in this case this was taken way back in 2006 i think okay this one is closing in on cristiano ronaldo why do we close in normally because something important happens right normally for example somebody uh, just uh, executed a very bad tackle sampai patah kaki orang kan so it's going to zoom in when a goal is scored we're going to, it's going to zoom in okay Uh, not really zoom in okay sorry they don't zoom because zooming in uh, involves like from from big become uh, from small the character becomes big no it's not zooming in but it directly changes shots to a close up like this okay but in animation sometimes it's a bit different because the the action is interesting okay like this sort fight but it just wants to convey first that something's going on so in animation it's a bit different but still it's to convey different moods But when you're talking about close-up shots in animation or in a movie, okay, then it's like to stress something important is sort of happening. Here. So these are the types of things that you might want to consider uh, if you're taking. I think after this, you guys might be taking a video course, Doctor Bengal, ke Doctor Siti. I also forget who. But these these types of things you you can uh, consider in order to make your video a bit more interesting, lah. Okay. So yeah, these are some of the explanations. They These shots try to convey like different meanings. These are production things. Okay, so you you have uh you learn a lot more by looking at <clears throat> some of the production videos. Okay, or taking a production course. So this is one example. Extreme long shots. This is an actual lingo used in either animation or in movie making. Okay, where in these types of shots, like the one we seen before, characters are relatively small, very small. To show the current local setting, so where things are happening, is it in a dungeon? Is it in a farm? Is it in some other? But for for extreme long shots, it's normally for yeah to to show the setting, and you can see some action going on. We're not talking about the really really like panoramic type of shots. We're talking about a shot that you can still see the actors, but it's not really. Like to show scenery. It's it's like 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 this one here, right? It's a long shot where the characters are far away, okay? But you know it's happening somewhere in a castle like this, okay? For example, the following shot shows the swash swash buckling characters fighting in a castle-like environment, okay? They're fighting. You know that's going on, and you also uh, like uh, there's also for example in this case. It might convey a feeling like when you have a look at it, like they are fighting sort of like at the edge of this very narrow staircase. Ada chanja to, so it sort of adds, you know, the suspense to you to keep you like sort of like off your seat. Okay. Okay, these are considered long shots. Although in production, the long shot might be the one that you see from from a bird's eye view. It's totally subjective sometimes, uh, but a long shot normally shows the whole character. As opposed to this one, it shows everything. Okay, slightly less long, like I said, compared to the extreme one we had just now. Okay, uh, mainly shows the whole character with some room over their heads. Okay, so that you can basically see the whole body of the character, whether it's standing up or sitting down or whatever. But you can basically see everything. Okay, again to convey. It depends what you want to convey. If you really want to show like the whole body being affected like this, then you use these kinds of shots. So what we call the medium shot. Okay, normally it shows like a partial body of the main character. Like this guy, he wants to throw this guy out. So his is medium, and the concentration is somewhere there. As you can see, you might mix these two, but the utility, as you can see, would be very different. Okay. And of course, we have close-up shots. Okay, close-up shots. Character or object of interest is put into focus. It fills most of the screen, but You can also have extreme close-ups. For example, this one, these two actually are very good examples. Okay, extreme close-ups. 
This is very famous in Japanese anime, Naruto ka apa ka. And the eyes will normally shake a bit, you know, like that, okay. Uh, the Superman one actually is more like a close-up. It's not really an extreme close-up, but it totally depends on the production house that you belong to. Okay. So here is just, just, just to show you that there are examples of these uh, short types that you might want to use, okay. If you're doing different, uh, if you're doing an animation project or a video project, production project for that matter, okay. And you also have something, okay, this is a bit different. Establish shot or an establishing shot sometimes or wide shot or extreme wide shot. So something like this, for example, when do you normally see something like this? And it's not static, like it's sort of like pants, it moves from, from here to here like that. Who can tell me normally when do you see this? This kind of shot. So it, it was sort of like, yeah? Somebody was saying something? Like for example, it might be like this. Okay, start like this. So the lagu background. Of course, the sound is nicer than my voice, right? So it sort of like starts like that, showing the scene. When do these kinds of shots come in? Yes, masa awal awal movie, which means during the sort of like the introduction of a movie. They want to give you the mood where this is happening. Like if you saw like a Batman versus Superman, Batman v Superman, right? They show Gotham, very dark city. They want to convey that this is a dark place. Criminals live here, and you have Mr. Batman, who's also dark, and Superman also is forced to become a dark character in that movie. So yeah, you get the idea. It's also used to set the mood. Okay, so similar to this one, right? This way, you might zoom in. You might, you might like go like down to the floor. Okay, this one as well. This might go to the house. Totally depends on what mood you want to achieve. Bali. Okay. Now, these are some shots in a storyboard setting. Okay, this is in a storyboard setting. But again, even in the storyboards, as you can see, they show the different kinds of shots, right? This is an extreme close-up. So we would know that this guy is, you know, getting his, uh, what is your rifle or is it a rifle or what, what type of gun? I don't know. Just getting it ready to shoot somebody. Okay. So these are shots. Get to know about them so that when you go out, you know that, oh, there are different types of shots and different types of uses for each of the shots. Don't just, if you, if for example, you're asked to do a movie because you have that name at the back of your degree, sometimes people will think you are MMU or Lim Kok Wing uh, students, okay? But at least if you know all of this, then Taman Janela, right? So these are shots. Another thing that we want to uh, like take into consideration when doing animation are camera angles, okay? Camera angles, it plays a big role of you know, conveying the message and the mood and all that time. For example, this particular animation, okay, slight Hitchcock effects, or the, oh, the Hitchcock effect, you know, I think that's from Alfred Hitchcock. I don't know whether you guys know him or not. But so I think this is looking at the eye or something. But anyway, this one I think you can relate to. Blinding bright light pours over Cletus as he sprints towards the tunnel exit. So you see the angle is from the back, okay. And this one, the angle is from the bottom because it's jumping. So you want to have that effect of the perspective of the buildings going up to show that it's a high place. And this guy is able to jump at this high place. So he, he must have some form of superpower. I don't know. <clears throat> and this kind of shot, okay, a wide view of Times Square, which is New York, right? But you have the perspective. As you can see there, these lines are, they, they, they indicate perspective to show that this is a wide and, and far away type of, uh, what do you call it, a scene, okay? So showing the grab, you know, and this shot as well, you know, it's like from the top, meaning that this guy is falling down, so it creates the mood, what's gonna happen to him after that, okay? So all of this, it might seem trivial to you, but in a production environment, it's actually quite important to sketch each and every one of these in order for the 
best type of mood to be presented, okay? And the best type of effect, visual effect, so to speak. Okay, you might also have this, the camera angles, okay? From top, from bottom. So th this is a, a low angle, meaning how, how you view these angles, the, it sort of like shows where you are looking at it from. Okay, if it's from a low angle, like you can see here, just imagine you are there, okay? You're looking at this guy, okay? It shows that he's on top and you're at the bottom. It might have different types of effect. I think this guy might be hitting you with a stick or something, so it might give that effect. But this one, you're looking from the top, okay? Again, those people who are fighting, okay? He's been hit down, so you're looking from the top. You might be a spectator in this case. Uh, but each of these angles, it has the different utilities. If you're talking about high angles, it has the effect of making the character look a bit submissive, obedient, or maybe even weak in this case. So in this case, it's not showing any of these actually. It's sort of like giving the message. And, and if you hear the dialogue, this is from the Incredibles, okay? The Incredibles animation movie, sorry, 3D animated movie uh, feature film from Pixar. So what it's trying to convey is that this guy here wants to take this guy, Mr. Incredible, as a mentor. This one, I forget his name. Apa namanya. But anyway, so it uses this camera angle. So as you can see, it tries to convey different types of moods using different types of camera angles. So in this case, we use a high angle. You don't use something flat just like that. It's not going to give any uh, sort of like meaningful effect. Okay. In this case, I think this was from Matilda or something. Yeah, it's from Matilda 2006. So this means, okay, this one is related to this scene. So this is a low angle scene. So Matilda is looking up towards this more dominant character. So as you can see there, if I exaggerate the scene, you know, really make it as a shot, you will see that combined with her main face, you will know that, ah, oh, this is a dominant person and this is the dominated person, so to speak, right? But if you do it the other way around, go here, let's try to zoom in. Okay. All right, so yeah, you can see, oh, this timid little girl, you know, kasihan dia, you know, she's scared. Same as this one, scared, right? So manipulate all of this to your advantage. Right, so I think this one is clear, right? Everyone understands <coughs> the meaning of all of these things. It, it's, it's quite straightforward, but the actual implementation of it might be a bit challenging when you actually put pen to paper, in this case, pen to tablet, or in your case, mouse to screen, when you actually draw and the difficulty comes. You want to add the background, you know, it doesn't fit, the color scheme is off, things like that, okay? But as long as you know you have this, then it should be okay. So the director, salam selamat lah, dia arah saja, okay. Okay, let's have a high angle camera shot, so blah, 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 blah. It's up to the artist to actually do it. You have other ang angles as well, the eye level angle, okay? Uh, so this one is just to give an effect like your at eye level with the characters, okay? And you also have something called the subjective angle, okay? Which looks something like this. It's sort of like you doing the action, okay? Sort of like a first, apa nama, first player game, apa first, apa nama dia? What do you call it? First perspective. Apa dia, Dr. Siti, you tahu ke? What I'm talking about. First player, first person's uh, shooter, those shooter games. What, what do we call it? You guys play it, right? Hmm? First person, yeah, sort of like a first person. I don't know what we we'll call it, a perspective or something, right? So this one is clearer. It's like you're trying to strangle these two characters, right? It's your hand, you know? And this one, for example, they call it the trunk shot, okay? Some production places might call it a trunk shot. It's sort of like you're from inside the trunk looking up on these, uh, I think this Parrot of the Caribbean characters, right? Bicycle shot. This one normally people do nowadays with a GoPro. So you can achieve that with a GoPro. So different types of shot. So all of that, you know, relates to shots, camera angles, and shots. Okay. 
And now some of the more terms, uh, some of the more basic terms that we have, you've heard of it, zoom, pan, and tilt. So which one is which? Zoom, everybody knows. Okay, zooming in, zooming out, making it bigger, making the thing smaller. Okay, uh, pan where it goes from normally left to right. Okay, actually your camera is sort of like uh, in, in the scene that we saw just now, where the introductory scene where we capture the whole city. Okay, that's when normally we pan from one scene, one scenery to another. From the bridge, we pan to the maybe another place to the park or something like that. Right. Tilt is going up and down, so please make sure you don't mix all these terms up. And you also have other types of terms, you know, like dolly, pedestal, uh, roll, truck. This one, it depends on the production house. You know, sometimes they use different terms at different production houses, but normally it's the same, but sometimes you might see something that's a bit different. For example, you have the dolly in and dolly out, okay? Dolly in, dolly out. Uh, yeah, and yeah, all of it. I don't expect you to memorize, but it's just that you know these these terms do exist. Okay. Uh, in Zoom, of course, I think you guys know what it's about. So this is zooming in, right? The scary act of zooming in. Be careful with zooming in. Sometimes it gets a bit overutilized, okay? And only do it when it's necessary. And normally it's done fast. It's like zoom, something like that, okay? This is zooming out, okay? Oh, oh, something happened there. So you need to know when to use these things, right? Uh, zooming out might... You want to give like a, a surprise, like maybe you show one part of the scene, like oh, okay, this is just one camera over here, blah, blah, but in actuality, what's going on is oh, it's from a bigger scene. Ah. Oh, we're talking about the pyramid, okay, things like that. Like the zooming in just now is like it's supposed to zoom into the face of this guy to make things a bit scarier, okay. So yeah, so these these are the terms that you should be familiar with, okay. Uh, like I said, panning just now. Okay, panning is like this. I try to achieve that effect. Okay, uh, it's supposed to go. Oh, sorry, that way actually. So from here we pan. That's the idea. Okay, that's the idea. So from here we pan to the left. That's how the scene is supposed to go. Is it the other way around? Yeah, it's supposed to go that way. It starts with E. Yeah. And say that down say so wrong, but I don't like. Oh. Who else cannot see the slides? Since bila ni baru ke dah lama? Baru lepas yang zoom in zoom in zoom out. Oh lepas zoom in zoom out. Apa pasal pula PowerPoint ya. Oh dia suka hati dia je tamatkan session. Okey saya dah cuba hidupkan balik. Okay, nampak? Nampak. Okay, so tadi dah zoom in zoom out. Alright, this one here. Pen, pen ni bukan mangkuk. Eh, mangkuk pula apa nama tu. Toyok nak masak tu, okay. It's going from left to right. So this is a storyboard. Okay, I'm trying to zoom in, okay. Like that, right. So something that starts here, imagine. Because pen, as you can see, you are trying to cover uh, something that that, that extends your display. So imagine this is the size of your display. Okay, just imagine this is the size of your display. Okay, it's only that big. But you need to show everything. So what you need to do, your camera will somehow pan. Okay, like that. Okay, and this is can be achieved in flash. Ah, okay, how can this be achieved in, in flash or anime? I need to show you later. Okay. So panning goes from here to here. You want to show like a moving background effect. Lah. So if you guys are, you've done this before, you might have an idea of how to do this in flash. Same as tilt. Okay, tilt goes up and down. So you start here, okay. I'm gonna go up there, okay? So you've seen like camera movements like that. From here, something explodes, pooh, go up, okay? So that's an example of tilting. 
And finally, we go to the storyboard, okay, which is just a visual arrangement. Basically, what you're doing is a pseudo storyboard, I call it. It's not really a storyboard, but it's something that, you know, you like the background and also the movement. That's sort of like an animation plan, but it can act as a storyboard. Uh, in animation, normally the storyboard, initially what they will do, they will use sometimes stick it notes, okay? Not really the stick it notes, but they stick all the actions that they want on a big wall. Okay, there'll be many of those things, and they're going to draw the actions, and they're going to act it out, okay? That's normally how it happens. So it can look like this. So this is an example of a storyboard. It, that's why I say you, you can have different types of storyboards. You can have it like this. It's quite detailed. Scene number 44, duration 20 minutes. Okay, not 20, I think 20 seconds. Okay. Uh, all these things, all the details are here and the sketches are there. Okay. And if you have dialogue, you include it. If you don't have dialogue, you just don't put anything. And action notes, any instructors for any instructions for the animator. Let's say there's some special instructions. For example, this one needs to like fade off or something like that. You know, there's a transition, things like that. Okay. Another example of a storyboard. The, but this one is actually for, I think this is for the an actual uh, film, I believe. Okay. So just another example of a storyboard. And you also have something that we call the animatics. Okay. Oh, by the way, fortunately, you don't have to do the storyboard because actually this course, we just want to learn about animation. So we want you to know how to animate. When you do storyboarding, it's normally a different process. And in some animation companies, they have storyboard artists. And normally these are people who are very good at sketching characters, you know, sketching like uh, figures and stuff like that. So that they want a very good looking storyboard. One of my friends actually is a storyboard artist, so he deals with this a lot, you know. He has to draw characters like this, like a face like that, with all these lines, and really try to show the action, okay? But anyway, okay? And we also have something called the animatic. Okay, animatic, I'll show you. Okay, where is my Google Chrome plug on? Angelina Tan. Oh, uh, Diamond, where is it? This is, ah, yeah. I'm trying to show this one. Can you guys see? Tanah Pak, yeah? No. Where is that chrome one? Ay, aku pasal dia tak keluar. Uh, bedtime story, downloads. Here, yeah, this is great. Uh, give me a second. Oh, okay, okay. I think I know why. Uh, because it's, okay, hold on. Huh? Four, two, zero, zero. This is uh, notes. Four. Animatics video, okay. Okay, it's showing, nice. Okay, so this these are examples of what we call animatics and I'm gonna show you a less elaborate one first, okay, which I'm trying to do now, give me two seconds. Bedtime, okay, this one. Okay, nampak tak muka orang tu? You're supposed to see somebody's face, uh, a girl's face. Nampak, nampak. background, background kali jauh. Huh? Uh, I'm going to play including audio as well. So if the audio is not coming up, please let me know. Like the death and love and birth and peace and war on the planet Earth. Is there anything that's worth So as you can see, this is an animatic. Whoa, come on and sing it with me. It's like a moving storyboard. You sing me, fa me, me, fa me, ti, la. And peace and war on the planet Earth. Yes, yes, that's it. That's so easy. Yeah, but that's what's fun about it. You should write something. You should write a song. About what? Whatever you're thinking. I guess we're already here. I guess we already know. We 
We've all got something to fear. We've all got nowhere to go. I think you're all insane. But I guess I am too. Anybody would be if they were stuck on Earth. Okay, you see these these small details like the arrow. It's like the face, you know, turning and stuff like that, right? So yeah, this goes on and on and on until the end. But I, I think you, you get the idea of what an animatic can be about, okay? It's sort of like a moving storyboard, like I said, okay? Uh, this is another one. This is from a Disney movie called Lilo and Stitch. You guys know that one? Siapa tau? Pernah dengar tak? Lilo and Stitch. Pernah. Pernah, okay. Ada pernah, ada tak pernah. Alright, so let's have a look. As you can see, it's a bit more elaborate. Maybe because it's Disney, okay? I think this is from one of the deleted scenes. I brought you some pizza, in case you were hungry. I'll just put it here, in case you... Are you ready for my bedtime story? Hmm. Once upon a time, there was a bear, and his name was Toaster. He was friendly, but he smelled bad. Not even skunks would let him visit, because they could not stand his bad smell. Toaster cried because his only friends were rocks and fish. One day, a princess heard him crying and decided to bring him special soap so he could have friends again. But she lives far away now, and Toaster doesn't have a soap yet. He still smells bad. He's so sorry he smells bad. Did you call the rabbit store yet? Yeah. They said I could get 20 rabbits if I traded you. So I think you can see uh, animation charts coming out, right? Like, like, for example, like right there, you see? That's one nice one, man. Yeah, for example, this one. How about that? Ah, this one here. Yeah? So that an animation chart comes. I think that's for the movement of the brush. You guys there? You got that? No. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, and you, you see the animation yeah. chart that came that keeps said, coming out. Twenty stuff like that. If I traded you. So yeah, this is another example of an animatic, and it's quite detailed. Maybe because it's from Disney. So there, there are many processes involved actually. You know? In, in all of this so yeah those are some examples and i believe i included all of the videos that i have for animatics in putra blast i think dr ct also will upload a bit later okay. so yeah and, and all the references are also here uh, in the slides so you guys go and have a look at the slides as well you can actually go to the references if you like okay to have a look at what what they are really talking about in depth okay so yeah that's about um, yeah that's basically it for this this week's lecture okay so the backgrounds and the shots so the main thing that i want you guys to really understand is that different shots you know you use it for different purposes and you already know there are some long shots extreme long shots establishing shots uh close-up shots and i think you can relate to the utility of each shot right you can basically imagine how they are being used when they should be used it's quite clear now so and and another thing that nowadays no, normally like when you really get an understanding of this when you look and when you watch movies, for example, or when you watch sports videos, for example, and hopefully these things will, will be, you know, you'll be reminded of, of what, what you've learned today and have better appreciation for whatever you're watching. Right? Okay, that's it for this week, Punya lecture. Don't want to go long. Oh, hold on, what? 
Just give me a second. I just stumble across some other stuff. I might have forgotten to cover. Let me check. Is it relevant? Okay, it's not relevant. Okay, but anyway, okay. Any questions that you guys have regarding this one or regarding the, the, the project? The sign, sorry, the assessment. Okay. No, doctor. Okay, if not, if nobody has any uh, questions, I would just like to uh, remind you of the due date for your assessment. And please take note that uh, this is not the end of that assessment, meaning that it has a continuation after this. So this will act as a sort of like a part one. And I'll be marking it uh, like it's a first test. But after this, you know, you'll have another project on top of this that you will be developing yourself, that you'll be uh, creating yourself and you'll be giving it to me like maybe in the third quarter of the semester. And during that time, Dr. Siti has already taken over uh, where she's going to present the, the, the computing part of animation. But the uh, creative part will still go on. Okay, We'll still want to see your progress of the actual animation project that you need to do. Okay, and to give you an idea, what will come after this is that you have to, based on your plan, you just uh, animate what you've planned. That's basically it. Okay, with all the stretch and squash, with all the anticipation, with all the uh, coming in and exiting, you know, it's gonna be around, I think, 10, 10 seconds long, perhaps or maybe 10 to 15 seconds long, which doesn't sound that long, but it's going to be quite long Okay, when you really animate it. So that's the project Okay, from the creative side. And that project will, 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 will actually find a way so that that project will actually be your final assessment. Okay, So meaning that you won't actually need to do a final exam, written test, but instead you'll be doing that project. Okay. So that's why you really have to plan this week one to seven assessment so that when you want to do the final one, it's uh, highly relevant to what you've already planned. Okay, the, the requirements will come out a bit later, maybe after your, your, you've submitted your first assessment. Okay, but I want to see a continuation where maybe in week, now week, upon week six, right? Seven, maybe in week 10, or week 11, I want to have a look at the progress, okay, the movement and stuff, so that I can comment. Okay, I plan to do a video comment for each and every one of you, tapi sebab 34 orang kan, oh, ramai lah pula. So I'll try my best, okay? And then we'll see what happens going, going to the very end. So, so you need to submit something like, uh, like in, in week 10. The plan is week 10, let's see, okay? 10 or 11, because you have to submit everything by week 14. Oh, maybe after that, maybe after that, yeah, maybe after that as well. Let's see how, but anyway, uh, week 10, you'll need to send in a progress, maybe something in week 14, perhaps, because if this is treated as a final project, then you'll be able to do it up until the date of the final exam. Uh, regardless of whether you do a written exam or not, uh, this course will have a date for the final exam, okay? Okay, so I hope that one wasn't too confusing. I'll put it all in writing a bit later. So any questions or anything you want to ask or anything you want to raise regarding the project or whatever? Not, okay, nothing. So, okay, so if that's it. So please don't forget to sign the attendance and please continue doing your assessment week one to seven you can ask questions through whatsapp uh, uh, if you need any help just ask through there and I'll try to help you somehow okay itu saja so if nothing else you guys can leave go do your project thank you 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 Alhamdulillah. Tapi dosen yang yang mana kan? Mana? Kena buat kan, kena buat sam tajuk dulu, baru buat action kan. Buat tajuk. Tidak, maksudnya macam yang action track semua tu kan. 
Uh-huh. Yung pala, 5 lang yan. 